We've got this new case to look at. It's the murder of Annie Arenzo in Oslo in 1974. Forensic Access is very involved in working on cold cases. The technology that's used in forensic science has progressed quite rapidly, particularly in recent years, and DNA technology in particular has become much more sensitive and much more able to get results. This is a list of all of the exhibits that could be available. Seeing the list of items that could be examined is an exciting thing for us. There's a lot of opportunity that we might be able to find something there. There is bloodstained clothing that was recovered from a woodland. That clothing was examined initially when the case was first investigated, and we know that that bloodstaining gave a blood grouping which matched Annie. That's quite exciting, and we know that with modern techniques, we have a high expectation we could get a DNA profile of the person that wore that clothing. I've been looking at the photos of these and the blood distribution that's on them just to see whether they could have been uh, worn by one person or two different people because mm, they cause look quite different from the, from the photographs that we have in terms of size. Yeah. Given the size and style of this jumper, it is possible that we might be looking at two people. Interesting, obviously, the, 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 the lack of blood car, staining yeah. around here and, yeah. and potentially a collar yeah, mark absolutely. here There's, and here. Yeah, quite clean here, and then there is a bit mm. of stain in this central area. So it could correspond with the collar if these two had been worn together. We could have the blood transfer from the cuffs. So they may have been worn together. I'm very excited now to see what can possibly be revealed through this modern technology. Thank you. Questions such as how many people were involved, was it a man, was it a woman, who was really the person that murdered my mother? This is the items that we've got in, the sweater, the trousers, the bra, the knickers but you can see from the packaging, it's an open bag. Obviously not as we would expect to receive items now. So it's not chain sealed of in any way? No, definitely not. So there's okay. a definite risk of contamination on top of the previous examinations. There's numerous challenges to a historic case. And it is quite often perceived that because it's already been examined and because the items have been stored for long periods of time, there's actually no value in going back and looking at them again. But that's very often not the case. All of the cases we've worked on, you at least find something that will assist and drive that investigation that little bit further forward. We've got quite a few cigarette ends that were in there as well. There's quite a few cigarette ends dotted around the scene. These are a really good source of DNA. This one is the only one that I could see so far that had any branding on it. Pal Mal. Yeah, Pal yeah. Mal on that one. The main female suspect was known to have smoked the Pal Mal brand. That could be interesting. Yeah. There's a lot of blood swabs that were taken from around the scene, including within the bathroom. The police believe the suspect went into the bathroom and cleaned up afterwards. There's some swabs were taken from underneath the sink. OK. It would be worthwhile considering them and see what we get back from those blood swabs. Yeah, absolutely. This is a jacket from a gentleman that was identified later on, a Borch, um, potentially a suspect. The jacket had some blood staining down one side of the jacket, and the jacket was damaged as well. Interesting. Looking for the blood would definitely be a good start. If we've got her blood on there, then yeah. that could be a very good link. Yeah. One of the main suspects that the police held was a female, but we don't rule out that possibility that it may have been a male. To examine for blood, we would use a piece of filter paper, rub it against the staining, and then apply a chemical that will react and provide a colour change. If blood is present, a colour change will happen. The blood swabs that were underneath and around the, the sink and the bathroom, the bathroom yeah. Yeah, we got a mixed DNA profile from at least three people from that. We've got Annie present within there, and then we've got male DNA as well. 
from the cigarette ends, the one with the brand and the Pall Mall one, it actually came out with a male profile on that one. OK, that's interesting, because that's the brand that we were expecting that one to be a female. Yeah, it it's, yeah it's come back okay. with, a, with a male profile. The jacket from Borch. The results, actually, were really quite surprising. There was felt to be blood from the police reports on the front of the jacket. However, it was not blood, and there was no DNA present from any found in our examinations at all. There was therefore nothing on the jacket that was linking it to the murder of Annie.